think it's fair to characterize Walker's recent moves on pay equity and women's health care as a war on women, and then there's specific questions about uh, what you make of the cutting of funds for nine Planned Parenthood clinics, the repeal of the Healthy Youth Act, which is age-appropriate sex education throughout the state, um, and making it a felony for a doctor to perform an abortion without first consulting privately with a woman to make sure she's giving consent. Okay. I didn't know you were going to go ahead. I was going to go back to the health care. We'll get there. We'll get there. That's right. No problem. Um, <laughs> and if you don't speak to the microphone, it's hard to hear. Okay. Uh, is it fair to characterize Walker's recent moves as a war on women, a war on women? Uh, I don't like the term war, and whether it was the Vietnam War, which first got me to run for office the very first time, opposing the war in Vietnam, which is a little bit of history, or the war on drugs, or the war on terrorism, I think those are, are bad political gimmicks. And I don't think we should use that, particularly when it's connected to women, because we're talking about war life. In fact, if they were in charge and we had less testosterone, we might have less war. Woo! <laughs> that's been one of my uh, interests for, for many years. But so anyway, I don't think that's a good term, but we need to talk about the issues one by one. Uh, equity pay, right to family plan, right to choose with themselves, their doctors, and their, their syndicate others, whether they wish to cure pregnancies. Those are issues that we need to talk about and explain why they're critical, and, and that they are a human right, and all people uh, should, should learn that. And I thought we got by that, you know, and now the Republican candidates for president think they got something going, they're running around, going back to the, what I call, 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I think I talked about most of the one. We, I didn't mention sex education. That's one of my pet peeves. You know, they, they keep going back to this, to this, uh, you know, abstinence only and study after study. And I followed this for many years now because I'm very interested in, in environmental issues, and, and they often relate to family planning questions. That doesn't work. And studies keep saying it doesn't work, and they keep saying that's what we have to do. Until you are willing to educate young people about their bodies and about how they work and do it in a reasonable kind of way that's, that's based on age considerations, so that, that, that's what works. And studies show that works, and I think we need a government, governor who has the, the honesty and experience to come right out and say that. Um, I mentioned pay equity, that's very critical. And then well, the last part of the question is, how do our views differ a great deal? I don't think they differ a whole lot, to be quite candid. <laughs> Thank you, Secretary. But it's certainly been 
political ideology that is driven by interest groups that is not good policy for the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. 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 against the bill, making it illegal for the non-existent health care exchange to allow the sale, the sale of health plans that cover abortion services. I argued against a bill that is now law that makes it a felony for a physician to not give a follow-up visit to a woman after a certain time period that has been prescribed Plan B. And I voted against eliminating funds for preventive women's health services, the very services that my colleagues and I voted to expand a mere two years before. This war on women, if we want to call it that, is ideologically driven by political motives. And I think it may be a mistake for our opponents. I think it may be a mistake, even from their perspective. If they think they're going to get additional votes, because of this political ideology, I think they are dead wrong. Yeah. Because everywhere I go, Republican women are saying, good Lord, what has happened to that Republican Party? It has indeed left me.